The Lord saw Leah's plight. The Lord saw her affliction. The Lord did not only just see, but he acted. The Lord stepped in. The Lord saw what was happening to Leah's life. And church, if you feel unseen, and again, I know I'm jumping to application here, but if you feel unseen or operate with the wrong view that God does not see you, this verse tells us something different. The Lord sees. The Lord sees and the Lord acts. The Lord steps in. And we are told that the Lord acted by opening Leah's womb. Let us take courage here. Because there's something that we see about God. God steps into our mess and he sees it. Nothing happens without him being present. Millard Erickson in his book, Christian Doctrine, he argues that God's continuing work, i.e. God's providence, means that God maintains and sustains his creation. God is intimately involved in his creation. God is intimately involved in your life because you are woven into his story. God is very much active today in every detail of your life. God is engaged with you. God was engaged in this narrative. God was engaged in seeing the cry of Leah. Leah conceived, we are told, and she gave birth. Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, because the Lord has looked upon my affliction, the Lord sees, the Lord has looked at upon, uh, upon her own affliction, and he acted. And she's recognizing that by the naming of her first son. The Lord has looked upon my affliction, for now my husband will love me. Though Leah is a hero, and we're presenting her as a hero, but Leah was human. It's interesting that she kept on twisting, bouncing between seeing what the Lord is doing, but also in her humanity, she keeps on wanting this thing from Jacob. There's this thing that she's after. She's after being loved. There's this complexity about us as human beings, isn't it? We are broken people. There are times where we see what God is doing, but then immediately we, we default to our own brokenness. And we see that happening. And that whole theme carries through. And again, I want you, for your Sunday afternoon reading, just read the other parts. Read the other chapters that come, and you'll see this. Because the Lord has looked upon my affliction, from now on, my husband will love me. She conceived again and bore a son and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am hated, he has given me this son. So the Lord sees, but not only does he see, the Lord hears. The Lord heard her. The Lord heard her cry. Verse 33 tells us, The Lord heard her. And she conceived again and says, because the Lord has heard me that I am hated, he has given me this son and I'm going to name him Simeon. Leah was hated so much by Jacob that in fact we, re we read in the next couple of chapters that he was willing to put the servants followed by Leah and her children in case they encountered Esau. He was willing to put her life in danger. That is how much she was hated but she recognizes that the Lord has heard her. The Lord sees, the Lord hears. The Lord acts. And again, there's something here that we need to see that comes up again in Leah's disposition. In Leah's situation of pain and being hated and being the second best, she recognized that children 
were a gift from God. She recognized that God is very much involved in this. And she keeps on naming these kids. And again, just to pause here and look at African culture, names mean something. And I'm sure that's true for most of our naming systems. Names mean something. So my name is not Zwai. Zwai is a nickname. But my full name is Mzwandile. Now I was named Mzwandile because I was the firstborn son in my generation. And so that means the home has expanded. The legacy of the Zulu family will keep on going through this son. There's something here that we see in this passage. In the naming of her children, Leah is recognizing that God is seeing her, recognizing that God hears her. God is present. God is involved in our every detail. In our every, God is doing a million other things right this second that we may not see, but God is doing something, and God is doing something in this narrative. The Lord was forming a nation, church. The Lord is forming the nation of Israel, ushering in redemption, our own redemption. That is what is happening here. And he's going to use Leah's womb, the one who's not loved, who's hated, and he uses that to usher in Christ. And here's how we see Christ here, in case you are thinking this is heretic. Levi, we know that we get the priestly line, right? We get the Levites. Through Judah, his descendant is King David. Jesus in his human form, we know that Jesus was fully God, and yet he was fully human. And in, in his humanity, he is the descendant of King David. David comes through Leah's womb, through Judah. And that's the other son that was mentioned here. Therefore, his name was called Levi. And then verse 35 says, And she conceived again and bore a son and said, This time I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah. Christ is known as the Lion of Judah. In the midst of our own brokenness, in the midst of your brokenness, in your situation, which I don't know what it is today, the Lord is working out a particular redemptive detail that we'll only get to appreciate years to come. Probably this side of eternity, we might not even see it. Maybe we will. But you are woven into his story. Your life matters to God. Your life matters. To, you're not just another stat. You're not just another person who's breathing. Your very life is held by him in his hand. Your very life is sustained and maintained by this God who is an ever-present help. He's with us. He walks with us. And that's what we see here. And we see Leah's Heroic things, again, in the midst of her own brokenness, Leah acknowledges that God sees, that God hears, and that God is to be praised. No matter what circumstance we find our lives in, no matter what you find your life in, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The scriptures keep on telling us of this theme of rejoicing. Rejoicing, and here we see there's this rejoicing that Leah shows us. That this time I will praise the Lord. This time I will praise the Lord. In the midst of her being hated, and this did not end. It carried on. And again, notice the naming here of these children. Who would serve as a reminder that the Lord has seen me, the Lord has heard me, and the Lord is to be praised. God is to be praised. I will praise the Lord. And again, what is happening here, it is so much about who God is. God is fulfilling certain things here, certain promises that he has made because he's a covenant-keeping God. 
He had promised Abraham and he had promised Jacob. And we see the fulfillment of that, even though it is scandalous. Jesus' line comes from scandals. If you go through Matthew 1, you see in the genealogy of Christ, and if you were to hyperlink on each of the names and just click on that, what you'll see is brokenness, scandals. There's somebody who is viewed as second best, who is hated. Jesus comes from that. The Lord is fulfilling his grand redemptive plan in the midst of brokenness. God is working. God is doing something. And my encouragement, I'm pretty sure you're asking, so what? My encouragement to you is to note something of Leah's life here. Leah was acutely aware that God is involved. God saw her. God was hearing her cry. And as you cry out to God in your corner, in your private corner, the Lord hears. The Lord hears. And the Lord deserves our praise. She was recognizing that. Don't lose heart. Do not lose heart. This is not only just for the women in the room. Because the feeling of being second best, that's a universal thing. So, men, don't switch off. Engage here. And my encouragement to you is, in your GCs, process this. Process this theme. And laid before the Lord. If that has been your family life, if that is what you felt in society, if that is what you felt in school, wherever, process that and lay it before the Lord because the Lord sees, the Lord hears, and the Lord is doing a thousand other things that we are not aware of. And that is what makes Leah for us a hero, an example. But again, it's beyond just Leah. It's about God. It's about what God is doing. God is at work. God is at work in your, in your life, in our lives. God hears, God sees, and God is to be praised. Amen?